Star Citizen is a very diverse game, and I don't think anybody can deny that visuals are a huge draw. No matter what you say about the industry standard for good graphics, Star Citizen has proven itself in scale and detail. But what's really cool about these locations they've built is how diverse they are. You can go from a deus ex dystopian metropolis to a high-tech floating city of tourism in minutes. And there's also plenty more where that came from. So let's take a look at some of the crazy differences in the atmospheres and cities around the game. And if you'd like more, maybe check out my recent guide to all the planets in the first star system. Don't forget to keep an eye out for that secret code where you could win a Polaris. And thank you for coming to my tomato talk. Take a dive down to Area 18, a city found on the planet of Arcorp, and you'll be struck by the utilitarian nature of everything. It makes sense, you can't build a globe-spanning city without reusing some assets. But the function over form nature of the city really sells it. Besides that, the vibe is very bright, with holograms, flashing lights, and interactive light particles. Shops dominate the alleyways, and large corporate stores stand tall in the plazas. The planet itself has always been a commercial center, but it's very drab besides all the lights. Dark abandoned alleyways are everywhere. Basic metal materials and grating is used all over the walkways, and flames, smoke, and industrial byproducts are constantly filling the air. Arcorp is an efficient, but not very comfortable place, due mainly to the fact that the company of the same name has sold out the entire planet to production and manufacturing. Put that into contrast with something like Orison, the floating city amongst the clouds of a gas giant. Not only is the immediate vibe much more relaxed, open, and soothing than the bustling nature of Area 18, but as you dig deeper, the fine details really sell the experience. See, the planet of Crusader was also bought by a company, like the rest of the system, but this was much more of a strategic purchase. Crusader Industries makes huge transport ships, and building those ships in the upper atmosphere of a low-gravity planet makes things much easier. Since they have their factory line, concise, compact, and productive, the rest of this large city in the sky can be saved for tourism. Orison is a city focused on drawing all eyes to their views. It's the best way to take advantage of the situation while still focusing on their cash cow. And it works. From beautiful water features to the hosanna trees with their pink flower petals which can only be found in this city, to luxurious materials and lighting used to create a calming ambiance, everywhere you look in this city, attention is focused on your well-being. The bar has amazing views, the stores are set in a beautiful indoor mall, and the walkways are large and opulent. There seems to be almost nothing that wasn't built with the people in mind, except for the egregiously low safety rails. They're kind of ridiculous, you can fall at any second. But the overall feel of this location really sets it apart from some of the others, such as Grim Hex. Grim Hex is a pirate base stuffed inside an asteroid tethered to other asteroids. It's a grimy, dirty place that isn't in any way, shape, or form focused on your comfort. Riddled with cave-ins, unpressurized hallways, and everything a criminal could need to thrive, this seedy hideout isn't for everyone. You'll notice some similarities with Area 18 and construction materials, and the more utilitarian nature of the station. But you won't find that corporate upkeep you might expect in the city. And you most definitely won't find anybody looking to help you, or take care of your injuries and ailments. Neglect, criminal interests, and a general lack of population have led this area to become something very unique in the Stanton system. In comparison, the bright white clinical look of Microtech might come as a shock to some more adventurous players. Microtech is a very high-tech company, or at least they'd like to make you think they are. It's a reasonable statement as they produced the Moby Glass, which we use to interact with almost everything, and some other useful devices in the Star Citizen universe. This reputation that they keep is part of their identity. You can see it from the hipsters jogging around the city, to the juice shops, to the virtually replicated Apple store which showcases their products. The walkways here are even wider, the set pieces more grand, 
the transportation speedy and clean, and the services being much more formal and polite. You know, there's no dumping of sewage out on the citizens, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The bottom line with Microtech and places like it seems to be the status. It comes off a bit pretentious, but there's no denying it's much nicer to take a stroll around the indoor city of New Babbage than the underbelly of Area 18. Before moving on to the last planet, let's talk about the space stations of the game as well. Even they differ a bit from one another, despite them being located in various areas of the system and featuring different gas cloud features, their facilities also differ. While some stations are built for function maintaining a refinery segment that melts and smelts the materials brought in by prospectors and moles, others are focused more on your casual traveler looking to rest and relax, or your entrepreneur making some cargo shipments. The design won't change much between these two, but you will notice a cargo module on any station close to a planet. And you'll definitely note the more consumer-focused branding as opposed to the rather industrial tone of the mining and refining focused stations. Finally then, there's Hurston probably the most controversial of the planetary locations in Stanton. Of all the cities here, Lorville, the capital of the planet, does not care about you. From the plastic bag-wearing residents, to the sewage being dumped into the city, to the never-ending darkness in the city streets, to the heavily armored and combative security personnel, Lorville definitely has the most noticeable atmosphere in the game. The city itself is utilitarian and basic in design and materials, much like Arcorp. But you won't find any of the same bright advertisements or fun branding. The unkempt nature of the city and the planet at large are apparent everywhere you look, and the oppressive nature of its rulers are made all the more clear when you realize you can't even purchase a weapon here. But then you take a moment to venture into some of the more important places, like the building of the Hurstons themselves, or the hospital. And you realize, while they tend to be quite brutalist in design, they have the ability to make things a bit nicer. Of course, in the meantime, they need to build larger-than-life statues of themselves and sell their own weaponry at a premium. But what are you gonna do? It's not like they'll just let everybody leave, but what more can you expect from a government that tells their citizens things like this? Sure, we all want to be able to work longer hours. But overdosing on stimulants is not the answer. From a higher chance of accidents and mistakes to a decrease in performance and quality of work, Hurston Dynamics reminds employees that too many stims slows you down. Besides these cities, you'll find smaller locations such as shantytowns, outposts, and a prison complex that all have their own feel. And in the near future, the colonialism subset of buildings will make their debut in the future to bring more diverse locations to the frontier on less inhabited planets and moons. We're also looking at some very broken down and abandoned space stations that will join these outposts in the less traveled areas of space, as well as explorable ruins from centuries ago. Besides these additions, the lore has already defined several types of building styles, and told us dozens of stories about the people who live in these spaces. So keep an eye out for the small details while you're exploring. And if you're looking for more Star Citizen content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And maybe even consider supporting the channel using Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member down below. That'll give you immediate access to all of my exclusive videos, as well as every secret code in my upcoming Polaris giveaway. If you didn't find it in this video, make sure to check again and then submit it on the giveaway page. Whatever you choose to do, I hope you learned something new in this video and I'll catch you in the next one.